Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. Today is kind of an interesting match. Uh, we're in the semifinals and I I did a live stream of this, but it, it was long enough. I didn't want people to miss it just because of how long the live stream itself was. And, you know, we ran into some technical difficulties at the start and in the middle. And uh, so I actually just took the video from that and I'm going to do a Grand Arena match uh, this way, the, kind of my older version, but um, there's a lot of interesting things here. I'll be making it significantly shorter for those of you who are interested in that sort of thing. I know that I usually am, and uh, anyways, uh, this is a good match because it's a guy who knew who I was. He was ready for me. He's watched a bunch of my videos, and uh, you can see how I kind of adapted to that, how he kind of adapted to that, and there's a lot of really difficult decisions that I had to make in uh, my various counters and everything, and so I'm going to take my time showing you guys that stuff, and uh, I should I should just be real clear, I'm, I'm not going to be doing this sort of Grand Arena uh, report or whatever video too often. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a special case, I, I probably will do it every once in a while, but, um, you know, you guys will have to get used to Zareth prevailing in uh, other multitudinous uh, platforms. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the match. Alright, so my opponent's name is Zuzi, or as he likes to say, it's Joza, which I ended up just calling him Z in the stream, because Joza was just too hard for me to remember, apparently. Uh, and other people were trying to get him to change his name, apparently, to something like Going Raw on Zareth, which would have been entertaining, to say the least. I wish he had done that. Uh, so... Just looking at the stats here, my opponent does have me beat on all the higher tier of relics. I have a distinct advantage in tier 3 uh, relics, so uh, that's wonderful. I, I do, I also have like a million more GP than my opponent, so definitely a top heavy roster. And uh, looking at Zetas, I have 20 more, which is, I mean, that's not huge, 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 but uh, it's, it's notable. Gear 13, I do have an advantage and our, my mods are, are a little bit better. Uh, and overall, in terms of success in Grand Arena, I do have a few more lifetime banners. Not not by a huge margin, though. Like This, this was going to be a really good match. And he, he was on my Discord server, so we chatted a little bit. Uh, he'd already seen a bunch of videos, so he was going to know my tendencies pretty well. And I, I decided to do a few things. First, I copied what uh, his Grievous team was exactly, and I actually copied his Newt team as well. You guys will see that in a minute. I also put Malak with Supreme Leader Kylo. My opponent only had Supreme Leader Kylo, not Galactic Ray, uh, but he did have Jedi Luke at Relic 4, so I, I knew I was going to have to deal with that. Figured Malak was going to help in uh, basically every single matchup. And I didn't really need my Darth Revan uh, squad to be able to take him out because they're not modded to be able to counter Supreme Leader Kylo. So you can see my Newt squad is exactly the same as his is. Um, I even put Watt in there, much to my chagrin. And uh, up top, I just put some squads that might give him trouble. Like Geonosians are hard to counter. As, at, sometimes at least, and uh, Kira Nest can be difficult, uh, so can Bounty Hunters, I put Bosk lead there just in case he tried to get cute with Darth Revan, which he has in the past, so figured that was worth a shot. His defense was, uh, it was surprising to me, to be honest. You can see that Padme has General Skywalker with her, with her. also the Geo Brood Alpha and Shock T, and then uh, Darth Revan. With, with the, it's the full bastard version. It's it's pretty tough. Up top, we have uh, Dooku with Sith Trooper and uh, Grievous Squad that is a little bit different than mine now because he changed it. Um, <laughs> how dare he? And then uh, a pretty high relic Kira team with a really bad uh, Kira. When I posted it in, on Discord just to show people a preview, um, someone was like, what? What's going on with your, with your uh, teams? And he posted that he had a cunning plan not to worry. Which, of course, caused me to worry, but uh, when we started the fight, my opponent had already cleared my Supreme Leader Kylo. It took two hits, but he did beat it, and so I, I was 
It looked like he was following up on his cunning plan. Not the not my very favorite thing, but I figured he probably had used Jedi Luke there to be able to counter it. And I, I do want to pause for just one second and explain exactly what my thoughts are in countering this bottom zone because I knew uh, almost certainly my opponent had placed his Supreme Leader Kylo on defense in the back. And uh, there, there was some evidence to believe that he had just placed his uh, arena team. Now you can see Malak is not going to be part of the Supreme Leader Kylo team. So that gave me heart because that's really tough to counter. Uh, though I did have the right characters to be able to do that potentially. Uh, and then up top, he also had Sith Trooper in there. And so I knew what characters I needed to save. Uh, in order to counter Supreme Leader Kylo, and these teams above uh, were almost designed exactly to be able to uh, draw out any of my counters for Supreme Leader Kylo, and so, uh, you know, there there is a method to the madness, and therefore I knew that I needed to do something special here. I knew I needed to be able to counter these two teams without using Fives or Arc Trooper. That, that was the big thing. I also needed to avoid using uh, my pet Padme squad, including General Kenobi and Anakin, and uh, so my my options were a little bit limited because I'd gone a little harder on defense than I had kind of preferred, just to make sure that he had a difficult time as well as kind of a backup plan. And so uh, here I'll, I'll show you guys what I decided to do. Now, uh, before the live stream went went on, I did ask a few of my shard mates to help me test something, and uh, so huge shout out to Johnny on the spot and to Hawk. You guys are amazing. Uh, and what I decided to do, I, I wanted to undersize my General Skywalker squad, uh, or rather, using my General Skywalker squad to be able to beat his Darth Revan. Now, note my damage for him is really, really high. I specifically have modded him to do a ton of damage. He doesn't have much protection but tons of damage on um, it, it's important here too that rex is fast enough to go faster than their uh darth revan squad uh, than their death darth revan and that ahsoka is here she is vital because you see rex uh does his special uh, and he calls her to assist and now we need to take out Bastila as fast as possible. We want to use basic. We don't want to use the AoE because the AoE is going to cause taunt on Malak, and then we're going to be hitting Malak. We want to take out Bastila. So um, in every single circumstance, this is exactly what happens. Uh, Malak does force drain and makes Anakin sit down. And the goal here, the hope is that they don't kill all of my clones, but. Um, that, that that can happen of course we want we want a couple times that skywalker sits down though so uh skywalker then stands up he kills sith empire trooper and does some damage to revan and uh i decided not to bring revan down below the 50 percent threshold uh because i didn't want him to share uh the the health thing um and so now uh, once again skywalker is sitting down and uh, so <laughs> poor, poor Anakin or poor Rex and Ahsoka, they're not doing great. Rex thought he'd take a shot at uh, Malak with his Annihilate, which obviously doesn't work, but I figured I'd see how much damage I could do uh, just out of morbid curiosity because at this point the fight's already basically won. Anakin does a huge amount of damage and just takes Malak out. 54 is a fantastic result. I realize that that's a little bit low in banners. It's not 60, obviously, because it's 54, which is a different number. But that is a pretty great result for using an undersized squad to take out a fully meta, like really fast, really high, at least decently high relic uh, team there. And uh, yeah, that, that was great. So we still have this Padme squad with uh, Anakin and... I didn't, I, I wanted to, my, my inclination was just to use my own Padme squad to counter this, but after a while of thinking, uh, I didn't think that the Sith Triumvirate by themselves would work, so I decided to take Palpatine lead with Vader. Now, the, this gets a lot more sketchy if there's 3PO in the, in the Padme comp. 3PO makes this counter pretty dicey, and you can see I, I was showing the live stream what uh, stats I had on Vader, 
uh, he's he's just got speed set with potency cross and that's that's not optimized i want to put offense on him but i did put the new zeta on him and get him up to relic five beforehand so i figured that that, that would be enough. I practiced this against other Padme squads in the past, figured I, th I thought that this would be a pretty good chance, even though this is kind of a weird thing. And so so if you use the, his, uh, his Murder Mayhem ability, I actually get six punches because Geobrood Alpha's in there and uh, counts as one. So uh, now we're just going to try ability blocking everyone that we can. I wanted to save up my... Uh, the dots here to, to, to do the saber throw, throw at the end to get everyone turn meter and maybe just one shot someone. I wasn't quite sure, but I knew that saber throw wasn't really going to be that necessary, really. I uh, just wanted to get loads of damage over time on these guys first. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's basically what I was doing here. Um, and, and you'll note, I'm, I'm still pretty new to using this team, so... Uh, not necessarily optimized, but it, it clearly works okay, um, at least up till this point. So uh, get Isolate up on the Brute and try to stun everyone. Unfortunately, we didn't get the stun off on uh, Skywalker, and uh, though I did get Pain on him so that he's going to just be hitting Scion, unless, of course, he uh, gets cleansed by Shakti, which it looks like he did. did. And so now I, I wasn't quite sure what to do. I figured maybe if I could just take out Padme. I mean, Padme's kind of the linchpin here. She's the one who's going to be causing me a lot of pain, which is ironic because she's actually the one who uh, causes, who, who has pain on her as a debuff right now. <laughs> so uh, with, with Skywalker annihilated and Padme dead, this was going to be over here. I uh, just needed to figure out what exactly I wanted to do and uh yeah this is this is a pretty good counter honestly you can see that trey is like almost dead uh skywalker decided to punch her but it wasn't quite enough and one thing i will note though is you, there's no jedi anakin here there's no kenobi here and i noted that right off the bat like the clearly my opponent was wanting to use the the kenobi lead uh that I, I will show you guys in a little bit there's a kenobi lead with some clones uh the counter to supreme leader kylo and uh clearly he wanted to save that in reserve and i i was able to deny him that by using malak with supreme leader kylo so uh, that that is that is one of the benefits for, for putting Malik in uh, with your Supreme Leader Kylo. So as as I had thought, there there was Supreme Leader Kylo in the back with almost the exact same team composition as I would have guessed. Uh, but first, before I took that out, I wanted to mess around up top, see if I could take out that General Grievous squad with Night Sisters. Uh, it, I was a little bit nervous about this because they're not super high level droids and uh, frankly if I if I killed too many of them too quickly the he, he Grievous could just wipe the team really really fast so the goal here is to kill one droid and then heal up and revive everyone and then kill another droid heal up rinse repeat if possible we don't want Daka to go uh, super super far uh, down in health before she gets healed up we don't want to kill another droid so um that i mean that's really the the scary part of this counter and so uh bb8 was the target first we took him out general grievous went and killed everyone for a minute um <laughs> luckily uh daka could revive everyone and zombie actually revived a couple as well because we were still in that stage of the fight and now the goal everyone's healed everyone's at full health so if i can do an aoe and take out ig88 which i did then grievous would get his aoe off and then i could revive everyone and heal up again and again we're trying we're just trying for bite-sized chunks here so uh droidica is kind of tempting but what we really want to avoid is uh exactly what happened uh, uh, luckily, there, the Grievous was not quite able to take out Old Daka, and therefore uh, Old Daka could just revive the whole team eventually. Uh, and even though we don't have a Saj, eventually that that could happen. So, um, 
it, it did, it did end up happening. It wasn't necessarily the perfect uh, scenario, but old Daka survived, and now we can move on to another fight, uh, getting another another meta team win with an off meta counter, which which is obviously to be desired, especially in these matchups where Galactic Legends are concerned. Really want to work on those off meta counters whenever possible. So uh, I, I was kind of hoping that my opponent was going to attack more than just the uh, two shot on Supreme Leader Kylo. I eventually just decided he'd probably seen enough of my roster to know to expect uh, my Jedi Revan in the back, and, and because this was all being filmed live, he, he could he could just extrapolate and make decisions on that. And uh, frankly, I was like, well, well, first off, I'm not going to use this team composition after looking at, at their teams. I'm not going to use this team composition to counter anything else frankly like <laughs> there's nothing else this team can beat except for supreme leader kylo now uh that this does rely on the current uh i wouldn't i won't call it an exploit or a bug it's an unintended uh interaction i think is what the devs have called it they're going to fix it but basically uh, fives is the only one this team is allowed to target because supreme leader kylo doesn't want to create super clones and so therefore he's only going to target fives or or sometimes he'll target Kenobi if Kenobi is taunting. So uh, Barris is there to help with uh, healing, of course, passive healing. She can also do the health, uh, the the big health uh, equalize equalization. And so the goal here is just to save her heal until it's really needed. And there, you, you'll note that there's no uh, Red Trooper here. If Red Trooper was here, I'd probably want to use a Padme lead instead, because uh, Red Trooper is going to help assist quite a bit. And um, it, it, when they, they assist, then it gives bonus protection. So, so I had that composition available if, if they had Red Trooper here. But uh, of course, Red Trooper was on defense, and I figured that out. Uh, I could have used Padme, but I, I just hadn't had an opportunity. So uh, first take out First Order Officer and Hux. We want to take out the support because Supreme Leader Kylo is going to be tricky to kill. Now Kenobi's extra defense is really great. Uh, Barris can call a mass assist actually under Kenobi lead uh, with her heal, which is a very strange interaction. It, it actually really surprised me the first time I did this in arena practicing. Um, <laughs> it just just kind of a strange thing. So uh, now the goal here, I, I've survived longer than sometimes you do. Like th this is a fully offense uh, Supreme Leader Kylo. I, I figured that maybe I could kill most of his supporting crew before he uh, before he ended up just uh, taking me out. And so I've gotten a little bit farther than I thought. So I, th I thought I'd start focusing on him instead of uh, Ultimate Kylo. I kind of think that was a mistake here. One thing I will note that uh, it's very difficult to switch any of these any of these characters. So uh, Kenobi provides the defense. He provides the taunt. So we're spreading things out. Um, Barris can heal uh, sometimes, and then you need another clone to go with Fives because uh, without another clone, then Fives can't uh, create super clones. So now uh, Jedi Knight Anakin is also great because he provides uh, healing immunity on his basic as well as buff immunity. So uh, Fives is dead, and now uh, we're, we're like, we have to scramble, we have to take out Kylo Ren Unmasked because uh, the, it's all going to go to hell very quickly. Uh, Kylo does have his... Um, does have his ultimate ready, so he's going to be immune to damage for three turns, and there's just nothing we can do. Now that uh, Fives is gone, he's not worried about creating super clones, so he can do AoEs, he can do all kinds of stupid things. So I'm, I'm sticking it out here. I'm not going to like restart or anything. This is actually a pretty fantastic result. Even though we have to two-shot this team, uh, we, <laughs> we still managed to take out his support cast, and I have the right teams to be able to take that out. Uh, however, However, I did want to start taking on other teams, uh, kind of save the suspense a little bit to see if I could full clear and take out Supreme Leader Kylo at the end. And frankly, I only had one team available that could take him out, and if that didn't work, then I was not going to be that happy. Um, I guess Darth Revan might have been able to provide an off chance of doing that as well, though I didn't really have all of the characters available to do that. I didn't have Malak. Um, 
which he would have been helpful, etc. So I've, I wanted to take on uh, a couple of these teams here. Obviously on the top here we have uh, this Dooku lead team with a bunch of like really hard-hitting characters that are either Sith or First Order. Uh, First Order has synergies with Sith Trooper, like they're all linked in some way. It's kind of a clever squad of leftovers, uh, but uh, they're, they're still just kind of leftovers. There's there's not a pre-taunt here, and frankly, like, there's <laughs> there, there's a lot to be desired. So, of course, my Darth Revan was faster here than any of these guys. You want to take out Sith Trooper first, if possible, uh, because we don't want, we want to avoid him doing an AoE that would make everyone uh, frustrated, or at least me frustrated. Uh, and eventually, I was able to dispel Spy uh, and his stealth, and... Uh, you know, this this was actually just a pretty one-sided fight. I don't know that they even got a turn. So, uh, 61 banners and an undersized win on that count. And, you know, you just want to find a, a team that you can beat pretty soundly with Darth Revan. You can get really efficient banners with him. Uh, but I didn't have Malak, which Malak is a huge part of the power there. So it, it's hard to take him... Uh, Hard to take Malak as or take him without Malak, just because uh, Malak takes a, lot, a huge amount of the brunt against the met meta teams. So uh, happy enough with that result. And now I was trying to figure out what team I wanted to use to counter this uh, squad with Kira and Mission and Zalbar. It has Wampa. It has, I believe, Droidica. No, Nest. Uh, and. I, I was hoping, actually, initially, I was hoping that I was going to be able to um, take my first order with Watt until I remembered Watt was actually on defense with Newt, which I never do, but uh, in the end, I, I, just trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to take, it occurred to me, I never do this, but I could take Sith Trooper with Kylo. Like, <laughs> he's still pretty good. He's, he's good with first order regardless. So, uh, the goal here, I mean, Kira needs to go down pretty quick, uh, and she's only gear 10, so if I can get a one-shot against her, then I could do another big hit, and maybe just do a huge amount of damage to Wampa. Uh, he's Relic 5 right now, so I was actually really surprised. Look at how much damage I did to Wampa. Uh, and so in, in the end, I, I decided just, <laughs> I was hoping that that, the AoE from Red Trooper would just kill him. It didn't quite, but it did end up... I got him on the next hit. And then I took out Mission, who was like Relic 5 or something crazy. And now we can start working on Zalbar a little bit. Start working on Nest. Gotta get through this taunt, of course. So, I just did my big hit with Kylo because I didn't want to get... Uh, I didn't want to get a counter from Nest on me. I'll uh, give a turn to Executioner here and uh, decided I, I probably with Executioner should have uh, just hit Nest there. Um, or maybe I was just waiting for a big hit from Executioner. So I did, did some good damage to her. Um, uh, the, the trick here, though, we want to make sure that we have full health and protection. This is going to be a really close match. So, or at least I, I was thinking that. And look at the damage that Nest did to Kylo. That was super impressive. Uh, and she stunned him. So uh, now we, we just need to take out Zalbar and then stretch out the fight against Nest as long as possible. So Zalbar's gone. Now we can two-turn stun Nest, and we just do basics here to let her turn meter go up, unless we want to take a little bit of time and heal up, which we do. You can see Kylo is only uh, full health, not protection, and First Order Officer is, need, needs to be topped off as well. So what we're go trying to do here, eventually we want to get Tenacity down on Nest. I've, I've been failing with Ultimate, or with Unmasked Kylo. He, if he does his basic, that gives Tenacity down. But what we want to do here, we want to refresh the stun whenever we can, and then um, if, if we can get Tenacity down, then First Order Officer can use his special to reduce turn meter. Uh, First Order Executioner can use his special to reduce turn meter. And meanwhile, if we can get a bunch of buffs on everyone, then that will regenerate health and protection. Uh, Kylo, original Kylo, is able to do 
um, some good damage as well uh, with his uh, second and uh, heal his protection if you have his Zeta. So um, now we have everyone topped off. Well, all we really want to do is uh, just, just shoot Nest with basics. You need basics, so we didn't, we're not reducing her turn meter too much because she's pretty slow. And so, so we just do basics and basics. And we save a couple of these other uh, attacks here too. We don't want to use specials uh, on First Order Officer or Kylo in case they're the ones who get, uh, who she comes out of stealth for. Uh, so now, or not stealth, but out of uh, damage immunity for basically. So uh, anyways, it, <laughs> it took a while to finally make it happen, but we had plenty of time. 60 banners there for pretty efficient win against a pretty high relic, uh, difficult team to deal with. And uh, of course, in the back, my nemesis, we have the, the General Kenobi Negotiator, which has been giving me a lot of trouble lately. Uh, but first, we need to clear this bottom zone. Uh, I, I wanted to take out this Newt squad with all of the Grievous droids, and then an L3 who has the Zeta on her. So that Zeta equalizes health whenever you kill uh, another droid. Instead of killing them, it equalizes health with all droids, or maybe with just L3. But uh, it, Watt put the taunting tech onto L3, and... So uh, all we have to do is kill L3 to negate her use at all. It, this is really sketchy because I don't have BB-8, but uh, you can see I'm, I'm kind of hesitating. I, I don't know how to proceed without BB-8, but uh, we just want to give turn meter to people or to someone with Finn. And uh, now we just want to do a mass assist on L3. We want to take out L3. I, I had actually been thinking maybe this squad was going to require some kind of uh, just multi-shot team because we, we can kill L if we could kill L3 with this team then we can use another team to focus down uh, B1 hopefully and then or, or kill Watt or something and you know just kind of zerg it down one squad at a time uh, but the goal here first we really needed to make sure we took out L3 right away and uh, so so I'm just trying to figure out exactly what the best method of doing that is <laughs> and uh, one thing I will note is that Finn does a huge amount of damage he's really helpful I, I really like that guy he's good um, another thing to note here is Watt is able to revive any of these guys besides um, I guess B1 and L3 so uh, if we can kill them then it's going to be permanent death for for them and uh, we'll just we'll be good. So uh, we do have two stacks of confusion on B2, so he can't gain bonus turn meter, which is huge. So now we can hit other characters as much as we want, and uh, so that that means trying to take out B1 as quick as we can. And then I was pretty confident once we did take out B1, then we'd hopefully just be able to um, you know multi-shot this team if necessary using lesser squads, but. Uh, of course, that wasn't that wasn't for sure. Uh, Finn throwing his grenade of healing is always uh, enjoyable, and now uh, I figured, man, we're we're doing so well. Like I, I figured now I, we've probably just win. We get everyone stun locked. B one is gone, and uh, now we can now we can potentially just focus on getting full banners, which uh, with Finn is not a problem. Both of the Finns actually can heal. I uh, decided to throw another grenade of healing, and one thing uh, one thing I do want to point out is Newt has days on him right now, and so he, he revives, but he doesn't gain that burn bonus turn meter because he died with days. Someone in my stream pointed that out. I didn't realize that at any point until then, but it's, it's pretty cool interaction. Uh, ended up getting 60 banners there, even without BB-8 uh, against a pretty high relic uh, droid team with Newt at the lead. Um, and now, of course, we have Supreme Leader Kylo left. Really, after looking at my roster, I decided, uh, someone pointed out, probably would have been best to have a pre-taunt here so that Kylo can't stun any of the vital characters, and that makes a lot of sense, but I... Uh, I went with Droidica instead. He's Relic 6. Figured he could probably do some good damage against Supreme Leader Kylo. 
and of course we want to damage. I don't think that was necessarily a terrible choice. Uh, one thing that did, did suck right away is he, he two turns stunned uh, Chewie, who, who I rely on to do extra damage on, or damage with. So luckily I did get Fracture up here, and now we just we need to do as much damage as we can uh, before, before Kylo comes out of Fracture. So switch stances with Luke, and eventually Chewie did get a turn, and uh, he's back, so that's great. Uh, Supreme Leader Kylo is out of uh, is out of fracture, but it was a little too late. My my damage per second was too immense, and I was able to dis dismantle him. I almost said demolish and dismantle, like dismolish, uh, which isn't a word. In case you were wondering, uh, and if you note the, if you look at the map, at some point my opponent did attack my General Grievous squad and one shot it, and then didn't attack at all until after I was finished attacking. Uh, but it was great because I could show my stream what was actually in the back without uh, revealing it to my opponent. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyways, jumped in against this. Uh, against this negotiator squad and everyone was surprised that I do a basic with my Anakin against their Anakin and the the whole goal here is just to get Anakin below that like 50% threshold so that the AI uh, puts up the big buff uh, the undying loyalty on Anakin instead of uh, getting instead of putting days on my my team which days is just really hard to um, operate around and uh, so now we, we could bring in Plo. There's not much point at this point to do that. So Fives is great. Does his big hit with target lock and gets Anakin out of his undying loyalty. Or an unending loyalty. Uh, some kind of loyalty. And now, uh, you know, Clone Sergeant is here. He's, he's a great candidate to... Um, to just hit with Ahsoka's big shot and immediately once I could man I was so tempted to use the uh, basic on uh, from negotiator on Anakin just to try to take him out but uh, circumstances aligned for me and I was able to take him out and after you take out Anakin it, it feels like you've already won like <laughs> even if they take out your Anakin you're still on even ground and if they can't take out your Anakin then uh, you basically just have no choice but to win it, which of course is one of my very favorite conditions to be in uh, if someone says you <laughs> you have no choice but to win I say well that's great <laughs> I, I will accept that. So uh, now it's basically just clean up here. Uh, the, these other ships, obviously, there's various problematic factors, but uh, the, without Anakin in there causing mayhem, going into stealth, hiding behind taunts, all the annoying things that all of us know about Jedi Knight Anakin at this point, uh, the, this battle can go a lot smoother and... Uh, I was hoping that my big hit here from fives could take them out, uh, and then I was hoping my big uh, hit from from Anakin would take both of them out. It wasn't nearly so epic as that, but a 64 is about as epic as you can get. And with that, I actually ended up getting a score of 1900, which meant my opponent would need to average something like 59 some banners against me for the remainder fights. And uh, I thought that maybe they'd have a tough time doing it, which it, it turned out they did. Uh, eventually, they did attack, and uh, they failed a few attacks, quite a few, in fact. And I think they just maybe loaded up their defense a little too heavy. And, uh, yeah, so here's my defenses. You can see my Supreme Leader Kylo got one. Uh, my Jedi Revan, that was the first one they attempted. They failed against that, apparently. Didn't even try my Newt team with all the droids that I was trying to mimic uh, them on. And then, look at that. Nest with Kira held the held the day. Uh, seven defenses there. Geos took three to get through. Uh, Bounty Hunters got taken out immediately uh, just WTF pwned 
and the final score looked extremely lopsided though. I think that it was a lot closer than it actually looked like. I think that the thing is, if your counter doesn't work against a meta team it, and you go really heavy on defense, it is so hard to uh, find a replacement for that meta team, for that meta counter. You just re you really need to rely on those counters to work. And after after getting having, needing to two shot my supreme leader Kylo, uh, apparently using Jedi Knight Revan plus uh, Jedi Luke. Uh, they they just didn't really have as much in the tank as they needed. Uh, I don't know what they tried against my Jedi Revan team in the back. Um, I, I'll be interested to see the Grand Arena histories, but uh, in the end, uh, it takes three hits to get through Geonosians. Like it, it just <laughs> things can go poorly pretty quickly, and uh, so I ended up having a very lopsided number. Though I think my opponent is significantly better than the number implies. Uh, anyways folks i'm going to wrap it up here i hope you enjoyed it this is one of my favorite matches in a long time really appreciate my opponent uh however you say his name z uh great opponent he did congratulate me publicly on my discord server i feel ashamed and chagrined that i don't have it on this video but it is taking way too long to make it as it stands i need to go to bed and so I'm not going to post it here. Go join my Discord server if you want to check that out. Um, it's in the video description. And otherwise, guys, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned. I'm, I'm live streaming most of my matches on Twitch. Uh, there's a link to my Twitch channel in the video description as well. If you want to check that out, uh, go give me a follow. Would really appreciate that in my uh, quest for affiliate over there. And uh, otherwise, guys, I will say one more time, thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.